What is up guys, Thaddeus here. I got my boy Matthew, the Instagram pimp. If you haven't seen that video on my channel already, you should. But guys, uh, we are talking about print on demand and how to actually use it um, to validate a product idea and why we actually started just recently, actually just today, um, a print on demand store and are actually literally doing what we're telling you in this video to validate the product idea and eventually 10X our margins and move to white label. <laughs> So if you don't know like who Matthew is, guys, again, he's he started what, on Twitter, he built really big Twitter pages, got a huge audience from that, and then moved Instagram, to Instagram. Yep, and then everything else, dropshipping, everything thereafter. So yeah, um, take two. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, literally right before this, we filmed this entire video, and then Thaddeus' camera decided literally in like the last 10 <laughs> seconds of the video to just stop living, and now here we are refilming all of yep. it. So anyways, Right to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so getting right into this, uh, basically we already filmed like the precursor to this video on my channel that's gonna be posted uh, before, before, yeah, before, before this goes up anyways. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, go watch that. That'll give you some insight into why we're even talking about this. Um, on there, we're talking about the advantages of print on demand versus drop shipping. And obviously there are gonna be advantages to either way, but basically I explained there that I think that for creatives, if you're someone who prefers to be creative, then print on demand is definitely the way to go for you. So if you care to learn- Especially just, if you want to monetize your creativeness. Exactly, yeah. Creative. And then obviously that ties into what we're talking about on here, which is validating those ideas that you have. Obviously you don't always have to be creative, so Thaddeus will explain to you how we came up with our yeah. ideas. So if you guys don't know, I recently turned 21. Uh, we were at the club here in Arizona. Again, this is Sebastian's apartment, but we were at the club um, and I saw three three guys wearing this same product. Now, you know, I do a lot of my stuff in the fashion industry. I got started drop shipping fashion products. I do white label fashion, but then with this, I came up to the guys, okay, one of the guys, and I was like, where did you find this or where did you buy this, okay? He, what he told me is that he said, I don't know. It looked really cool. I saw it online and I just bought it, okay? So then immediately I was like, all right, that, that's, that's you and me, we're gonna be that guy. We're gonna be that guy that he just bought it from, okay? So I had that idea, I felt like I could tweak it a bit, do it a little bit better, um, and then, again, here we are today, literally launching that store, and I wanna walk you guys through why we're starting with print on demand to validate the idea, and then moving to a full-fledged white label company. Because again, with drop shipping, guys, as I said in Matthew's video on his channel, there's, there's pros and cons to both, and with print on demand, you are facing higher margins, okay? But the reason we're using print on demand is because we don't have any risk. There's no, there's no huge capital risk to validate our product idea. What we're doing is we're testing the market and he, he's got a fat market, okay? So what we're doing is we're just gonna validate the market and see, okay, are these products something that these people want to buy? And then if it is, then we are going to delete the Printful app because we're using Printful, <laughs> all right? We're not gonna print on demand that. And then we're literally gonna go straight to white label, eight, 10X our margins, okay? Because again, if you guys don't know, with print or with print on demand products, your your margins are a lot, you know, harsh. Terrible. They're they're they're, 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 they're literally terrible. like terrible compared to at least dropping where you can mark up stuff, do crazy stuff. Again, if you brand it, you you can kind of you know um, win on the margin side of things. But again, that's when you just you don't need to use Printful in that case if you're going to go full fledged branding. Um, so that's what we're going to do, and then cut off Printful, full fledged brand, 10x our margins because we already know the product sells, and then just scale up to the moon. Yep, so basically on my channel, I explain it really briefly, uh, but on here I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth on why Instagram is so important to that. So if you're doing theme page marketing, then obviously you know that with theme page marketing, you're shouting out your brand on Instagram and you're building the followers and you're building the legit activity, you're building potential customers, uh, basically, you're doing everything right for your store. So obviously, if we want to build a brand here, then that's the main goal is we need to get all of the followers up. We need to get uh, people interested in our brand. We need to get people wanting to buy the product so that way as we decide to launch other products. So obviously, we're actually not just going to run with the one product he saw. Uh, we're going to be running with a whole string of products that uh, Mr. Content King over here already designed based around this one uh, winning product that he's already found. So with that being said, we want to be able to sell to these people and build this whole brand around this idea. And in order to do that, we need to promote on pages that are going to be in the niche of the product that we're selling. So uh, in the last video, I accidentally kind of gave away the niche. <laughs> you guys aren't getting that lucky on this one. <laughs> but. So, what the fuck was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> talking about niche marketing. Basically. Oh yeah. A lot of theme page marketing is all niche based. So whenever you're promoting a product uh, and you want it to have a real brand, obviously you're going to need some sort of niche to it that you can actually target because everyone has to have some sort of certain goal, like a brand and a niche are really similar things. Theme pages are just like kind of like pages. Oh God. So theme pages are kind of like brands in their own. And when you get shout outs from them, you're getting their followers, you're getting kind of like a social proof. Um, you're getting the vouch from these pages really if you're doing your ads correctly. And that should boost your exposure, that should boost your brand following. Uh, it'll boost your social proof on your page so that way when other people in the future come to your page, they're more likely to buy. Obviously, if you have zero followers and all your pictures get 10 likes or zero, well, I mean, if you have zero followers, you're probably getting zero likes. <laughs> if you have 10 followers and all your pictures are getting one like, then no one's going to buy from you, obviously. Um, would you buy from a page that had 10 followers and one like? Probably not. Um, so you need to build that up. You need to build up your front end. And the great part is, is if you're doing your content correctly, you should be able to get sales, possibly even profit. Obviously the margins aren't going to be super great with print on demand. So you might profit, you might not kind of depends on how good your product actually is, but really you're validating your product and you get to see if it's going to work when you decide to go and white label it. And then on top of that, you're getting to already build your front end and your back end to your brand. And the more you do that, the more you build your back end, your emails, your numbers, your pixels, data, uh, the more you do that, the more you build your storefront, you know, your follower accounts and all that stuff, the more you're going to be able to maximize off this brand in the long run. So print on demand is like a great step into all that. And then it's even greater if you're someone who's a creative and wants to get into that. It's really great if you're if you're someone who hasn't decided to take the step into drop shipping just because you can't find the right winning product, but maybe you already have ideas for things that can work. Maybe you're a step ahead from most. Like drop shipping is a little bit easier to find a winning product, I would say, because it's really easy to imitate. It's not super hard to just find something that's already doing well and just copy that and run with it. With print on demand, you have to be a little bit more creative and a little bit more crafty. If you're not on the prowl like Thaddeus mm -hmm. and just finding whatever works out in public, um, or if you're not like me, uh, like I was talking about in my video, I have another print on demand store that I'm building that's based around uh, kind of a trend that I already know works. And then I'm doing all original designs around that. And then I'm doing all original designs around that. And then with those original designs, we're gonna have our own kind of brand on that end that we're gonna be able to run with. So if you're able to be more creative or if you just kind of want to take a next step or a different step or just a different approach in general, you know, it's quarter four, so now is gonna be the best time and probably the easiest time to do that and the safest time to do that. Mm -hmm. You might lose a lot harder. It might be a lot more difficult to do that at some other point in the year. So by the time you guys are seeing this video, it's going to be peak quarter four. Uh, you're going to want to, if you're, if it's prime like, quarter yeah. four guys, like prime ribs, barbecue sauce, <laughs> the whole shebang, you got to get in. Yeah. If you're, if you're wanting to do it, then like now is the time to do yeah. it. And the key thing too, guys, like remember what he said is we are testing with print on demand. We're not actually going and planning to stick with print on demand the entire time. That's even with drop shipping guys. Like what I like live and teach and preach by is you use that to test you get like sales, you get like, you actually learn how to like start and get sales and get like a successful like store going. And then eventually you should be looking to convert it to a private label, white label brand. Cause your margins are 10 X better. Like you're just doing that because you don't have to spend money testing products and verifying that works. But once you know it works guys, so, like once we know this print on demand works, you best believe I'm gonna get my ass out of there as fast as possible to like, to maximize my, my freaking margins. Okay. So I'll talk, I'll get like suppliers in China. I'll show them exactly what I want. Cause again, Printful made it right. That's just the same design, same sort of product, but then I have suppliers make it in bulk. So it's literally so much cheaper instead of made on demand. Okay. So again, we're just using that to maximize our margins and then scaling that up. So our initial goal in the beginning isn't to make profit. Okay. Our initial goal is just to be like, okay, people actually want this product. Okay. Cause once we know one person wants it, if you can get one person to buy it, you can probably get a second person to buy it. If you can get a second person to buy it, you can get a third and fourth. If you can get five people to buy a product guys, you can probably get 10. If you can get 10 people again, you see where I'm going. Like you can get more and more people to buy it. We just need to validate that. Okay. And we need to validate that as cheaply as possible. And once we, <laughs> we just need to validate that 
as cheaply as possible. And once we have that knowledge, once we know, okay, people want this, then we look at our back end and maximize the profits there and then scale. Okay, guys, that, that, I think that's the key thing that you guys need to like understand or take away from this. And then I also know, so me and Matthew are actually talking about how to market our product um, off camera a bit. And I guess this is like a little Twitter tip. I'm not gonna like give anything away, obviously, but I'm saying, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is basically just like, oh God, what is he gonna say? Um, <laughs> I'm saying guys, a cool marketing tactic, okay? Especially with social proof, is he was saying, like in a typical ad, right? A typical ad is the company posts something, all right, and they see it, okay? And they're showing it to customers, right? And they want those customers to buy. What? Oh, what the fuck? Where the fuck do I start that? What it is, is when you... So guys, so this is a Twitter tip, okay? So basically what we're talking about is typically, right, a, cus uh, a company, when running an advertisement, like the company profile would post photos and then they'd like promote that ad, or like, they, like that would be the ad, okay? Now what he and I were talking about is the company actually like post the photos, right? But then again, this is Twitter, right? So like this is just like a, literally a free value tip for you guys because we don't talk about Twitter a lot. Um, but we have someone else actually quote tweet, okay, quote retweet, yeah. right? Quote retweet the actual company's photos. They say something along, like they say something that has some sort of viral capacity to it. And then that is actually what we aim to push and go viral, which gets the sales, okay? Instead of it looking like a straight up ad, it's just someone, some person, it could be with influence, right? They say something and then you blow up that particular advertisement. Yeah, and there's uh, multiple ways to do that. So I've done that on Twitter for a long time. I do, Kind of that on Instagram. So a lot of the ways I do my ads on Instagram is I just make something like that, like a viral seeming tweet and then screenshot it and use that as my ad on Instagram. So I can actually do that both ways. And I, at some point I'll probably explain it on my channel. I don't know when I have like a whole list of videos <laughs> I have to get through first. Um, but at some point I'll go a little bit more in depth on that. But yeah, so Thaddeus explained it pretty well but it doesn't always even have to be a store to another person. Sometimes you can just have it as a tweet from one person or even a catfish, a fake account, and then quote it from another catfish or fake account. Um, and then there's just like so many variations and so many different ways you can go about that. But whenever you can think of something that has to do with your product that can go viral, like it can be totally unrelated to what the product actually is. I can think of a perfect example actually. So I have a friend who is promoting uh, those rose orb lamps. Oh man, he's gonna <laughs> hate me for this. I'm gonna send him this video right after. So I have a friend who is promoting those rose orb lamps maybe like six months ago. Uh, it was a dropshipping store. It was something just off of AliExpress, pretty good uh, profit margins. And he was running it just on Twitter. He's just a Twitter guy. He doesn't do like Instagram or anything. He pretty much just does drop shipping and Twitter. So when he was running it on Twitter at that time, he would make, oh, I can't even, I, I can't say how much he would make actually, but I can say that his ROAS, his return on ad spend was usually around 10X. And all he was doing is he was quoting the pictures of the product from his store page on a catfish page and saying something like, oh, this looks like a shield potion from Fortnite. And it would go like semi-viral every single time. And he would just make a ton of money off these ads he really wasn't spending much on uh, just because it had that viral factor to it. Whenever you can put some viral, whenever you can put some viral factor into your pro, oh my fuck me. <laughs> whenever you can put some viral, I got this. Whenever you can put some viral factor into your ad copies, then you'll have a much higher chance of converting and getting a ton of sales and getting those ridiculous return on ad spends on, you know, whatever you're spending. Try to throw that in there whenever you can. That's just our little extra tip, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, just video. a little secret sauce for you guys. That <laughs> extra value for you people. <laughs> Hell yeah. We love that value. Oh yeah, but guys, that's basically the video. Uh, again, just wanted to recap, uh, basically, you know, kind of showing you guys how we plan to and how, you know, if you look into it, validate a product with print on demand and then eventually move that into a white label brand. Um, and kind of like just the back end behind the scenes, sort of like how that would look like, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, check out Matthew's channel uh, for the print on demand versus dropshipping video and some other stuff too. I've been in a few videos on his channel. Should I not air gun them? I'm like shooting them, I feel like. Is that kind of weird? I don't want to shoot. All right, oh, okay, well. Love. Oh, I still did it. I can't, I can't <laughs> help it. Oh yeah, but make sure to leave a like and make sure to comment, respond to everybody's comments and don't forget to subscribe guys to the channel will be linked down below as well as everything else including my course. I gotta plug that baby. Um, and then uh, yeah guys, I'll see you in the next video and take care and peace. See you guys. Whoop.